Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Alexander Huddleston, and this is my submission for my Comms 3 uh, Cultural Artifact Project. So, uh, yes, we are in my garage because it is 1130, and my room light is going out, so it's flashing. I don't want to cause any seizures or epilepsy. You're welcome. And yes, I'm wearing my super small prom outfit from high school. Didn't realize I got taller. So, to begin... Uh, I chose for my uh, artifact the North American United States voter's ballot. All right, This is the envelope that a normal voter's ballot would come into, uh, come in when you receive it and when you send it out. Here is a sample ballot of what it might look like when you fill it out. You have the candidates, you have um, the staff offices, you have uh, by different, by different, um, the political party and I feel like I chose um the ballot as my subject because especially right now it has it's a big big uh big title in our news right now with the whole 2020 election I know it just ended but it still was a huge deal it still is I mean they're still recounting votes and everything um so I thought I thought it had a really good real world connection and I thought kind of outside the box because it's it's an art. I mean, it's it's a cultural cultural artifact that we have that was built on diversity. It's it's building diversity um, between political parties, between uh, people of different genders, between uh, races, cultures, uh, anything, ages, even anything that you can diversify yourself from someone else. It builds onto that. So um, I chose three topics to to talk about about the ballot. Uh, age, uh, culture and race, and sex, or gender. So first, um, first we look at, uh, age, right? Which we take, uh, this, a turn to the, uh, United States Census Bureau, which is where I got a lot of, um, a lot of facts for this. Uh, the U.S. Census Bureau says for most voters in 2016 by the way uh 65 and up uh set 75 70 percent of 65 and up uh american citizens voted in the 2016 election uh and then uh 45 to 64 year olds in the united states in 2016 65 percent of them voted and then 30 to 44 year olds only 60 percent of them voted and then 18 to 29 year olds only 45 percent voted them voted in the 2016 election um i feel like this has something to do with history uh because because you can see that the lower the age or the younger the voter actually the less voted right because i feel like the older you get the more experience you have with the world and and you understand that you need to vote or you have the right to vote. You understand the power that you have behind voting. I feel like a lot of um, younger people don't realize that. And you have this power to make a difference, right? Um, and then and then we take, we take, um, oh yeah, and here's the, here's the graph that shows uh, what I was talking about. See, the 65-year-olds are way up here, almost near 80%, right? And then you have uh, you have 45 to 64 year olds, 30 to 44 year olds, and then 18 to 29 year olds, right? So that's 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 just that's just the graph from the um, for the U.S. Census U.S. Census Bureau, right? And then we take uh, a turn to the uh, Pew Research Center, all right? So. Pew Research Center said 52% of the elect of the voters this year were actually 50 year olds, 50 years and older, right? So once again, I feel like that plays a huge part because how was 52% of the voters 50 years or older? There was there was 52% of middle age and up out of out of all the registered voters that voted. So that shows millennials. Millennials and and just young people in general don't realize how much power they have in this voting in this in this piece of paper, right? And it just shows that I feel like the 50, 50 and up age age range, I feel like they they've 
bad experience. They've seen presidents. They've seen different uh, different people in power, and they know who they want and who they're looking for. And then they see flaws and, and differences in the candidates, especially this year. This year was crazy. So um, that I mean that I think that plays into it. Uh, and then we go to the. Um, Test yourself for how biased you are, uh, website, uh, the testing tolerance. And we, uh, take a look at how we, how we determine our biases, right? I said, as early as age three is when we determine our biases for certain groups or diversities or anything. Um, they begin to, uh, we begin when we're younger, begin to form attachments with the people around us or the communities around us. And we learn that we're supposed to um, supposed to think a certain way, right? Just because everybody else does, we do too, and we we see that uh, we see that other groups are different than ours, and their views are different. So we 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 learn to think against that. We we learn that that that's wrong, right? So overall, it just it just determines. Um, that it it really depends on on who like wh how you how you were raised basically in age and and like what you've seen what you've experienced basically so next to move on we're going to go to culture uh back back to the US census bureau uh, that's upside down United States census bureau uh website and here's the graph just so you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about here. So we're going to talk about um, uh, culture and race, right? So 75% uh, of the U.S. Census Bureau, U.S. Census Bureau uh, conducted a survey in 2016 for the political, for the 2016 presidential election. And 75% of the voter turnout was white, 60% uh, was black. 50% was other, so meaning uh, Asian or any other type of any culture or race that wasn't, that kind of just mixed in together. And then 49% was Hispanic. <sighs> um, I believe that uh, a lot of this, especially those big numbers, so like the 75% for the white and the 60% for the black, I feel like that played a major part in the election um, just because and and race and culture in general, I think, plays a major part in elections and voting because certain certain diversities and certain cultures face different challenges than others. So like uh, Black Lives Matter is more of an African-American feeling, right? Uh, they, they face adversity that some other cultures don't. And that's what that that uh, that system is based on. Right. So that's why I feel uh, diversity and and race and and culture plays a huge part in elections because that is that is where they can voice their opinions and make their voice heard and they could elect someone who aligns with how they believe right uh, then I got some information out of the textbook um, leave no I do not okay uh, I uh, it says uh, they were talking about high context cultures, which is which are cultures that um, require uh, a little less information. They they just kind of go with the flow, right? So, um, and a lot of these, and one highlight that it actually one one culture that it actually highlighted was the African American culture, and they say that these kind of cultures are expected to know what to do, right? So it 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 takes away. Um, it takes away any any like I like I said before, we learn diversity and we learn to disagree with other groups because we know who we are based on who we were raised with, what what we were raised with. So that kind of go back goes back to that point a little bit. And then um the Pew the Pew go back to the the Pew Research Center back there. And they said um in this year's election 69% of the voter turnout was white. I feel like, um, same kind of thing. 69%. It's a little bit lower than the 2016 election. Um, but that 
still plays a huge difference based on who gets elected. Um, like the Black Lives Matter movement has raised a ton of awareness and a ton of uh, influence, a ton of um, white Americans to follow follow the follow the uh, movement, right? So I feel like not all of those sixty nine percent was was more Republican, right? So it changes it a little bit, changes the ideals and changes the ideologies of the voter turnout. So it changes the election outcome, right? So I feel like back back to that whole point where it's it's what who we are and what we believe in is is what affects uh, this ballot. It's the diversity, it's the adversity. Um. Next. Okay. Next, we're gonna talk about sex and gender. Um. So back to the census, the uh, U.S. Uh, census Bureau. Um, we had a participation. Participation um, of female and versus male uh, voter turnout since uh, 1980. So you can kind of see in that graph that males uh, have always registered less than females, actually. And even the voter turnout is more as a woman. So more women register to vote and vote than men. So... Um, I feel like that plays a huge part in elections, uh, just because females have a different, just just like different cultures, it's a different culture for men. Men have their own issues and women have their own, right? It's uh, like, what would be an example? An example of, of abortion, right? Men can't really argue on that point because that is a woman's body. And a woman, uh, a woman, women choose who they're voting for based on what, what aligns with their with their political stances and so do men everybody aligns votes for whoever aligns with their political stances so i believe same thing as before when you're raised or with your when you when you see what you believe and like what where you are and who you are what you believe what you feel is right to you and that changes uh, um the u.s ballot um just the diversity of everybody's different opinions that's diversity. Um, okay, and then on to the Center for American Women and Politics. Um, where go? There we go. The COP, I think it's called COP. COP. I don't know. Same, somewhere on there. Uh, so that that showed uh, women and men turn out by percentage since 1958. And it showed that a lot of men and women are actually more Democrat than they are Republican. Um, however, women are more Democratic than men, where I believe it was in 2016 they showed women were 55% Democrat and men were about 43. And then it flipped for Republican. Men were men were 50 or 47 and women were 45. 43 the math I, I i can't remember the math correctly but it flips and it shows that different different genders also play a role in how the elections played out how the how the ballot is filled out right and it shows how um just how just how diverse everybody's opinions are based on how they feel and what they go through in their personal lives so in the end, um, I chose the ballot because clearly, as we've seen, um, it goes through many types of diversity, whether it be age, gender, uh, race, culture, any of that, because different people go through different things. And that diversifies the U.S. ballot. Um, for my references, I used uh, the Open Course Library textbook, uh, the U.S. Census Bureau, I used that... For I use three different websites for that, three different um, sources through their website. Um, I used the Center for American Women in Politics. I used the, Pre uh, the Pew Research Center, and then I used Teaching Tolerance. I hope you enjoy my presentation. I know it's a little long, so I will now say goodbye and have a wonderful night.